they were asking for a miracle so that they would believe and they were disbelieving in the face of the greatest miracle for which is greater the ability to come down if you could or the choice to stay dangling there in pain and in torturous agony out of sheer love which is the greater miracle sometimes we must ask the right questions he went on with it it was a deliberate choice that he made but who was he dying for anyway his own nation had kicked him out his own community had said they didn't want him and rejected him the leaders of his own nation had plotted gone to the Romans and said let's put him to death all his disciples had fled one of the disciples had betrayed him and one of the closest disciples had denied him with cursing and swearing who was he dying for how dark the prospect of making an ultimate sacrifice for nothing at all and yet he went on ultimately the cross is a choice it is just like coming to crossroads that was the words crossroads when you come to a crossroad you have to decide this way that way front or back ultimately the cross as a story and as a meaning is not the thorns not the 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 spear not the nails not that wooden instrument of torture ultimately the cross was a choice a single simple piercing ruthless choice save yourself or save this world of blundering wretches like you and me how hard was that choice how hard is it to make a choice he is the prince of heaven the commander of all the angels and consider you and me wretches self-seeking selfish corrupt individuals how hard is it to make the choice how easy to say hey this is the choice i'm making but the choice had to be made on a basis that we don't fully understand because righteousness and love like sin and evil have no explanation sin with a reason is not sin anymore love with a reason is not love anymore love loves when there is no reason to love love remains when every other type of relationship has gone because every other relationship needs a reason love had no reason to be there in the first place so it can find no reason to leave are you with me and that is what we see because that is what was portrayed and that was what was acted out on the cross and in that making of the choice i wonder if we can imagine in our minds a person making up his mind what could have swayed his mind then there was only one factor figuratively i will say it he saw your face and mine 2000 years later he saw us bruised and battered in life woeful and weak slipping down a slippery slope straight to perdition and hell and there welled up in his heart a wondrous compassion so deep and broad that he forgot about himself he made up his mind and what did we say was the definition of righteousness 
you first, not me. And in the most brilliant demonstration of righteousness, this man, dangling on an instrument of torture, ready to die, turned to you and me and said, you first, not me. And he turned to his father and said, if there's any chance, give it to them. As for me, goodbye. And somewhere along the hours, as he hung on the cross, his father cut himself off from his son completely in an act of consummate justice against sin. And with the hiding of the father's face went the hope of resurrection. He could not see beyond the tomb. He died on that day with you and me on his mind, not himself. This is love. This is love in which it's not fuzzy feelings. It is the total and complete self-abnegation, which is the foundation of love. It's the foundation of this man's kingdom. He lives there. He does nothing for himself. He will never do anything for himself. If there is anything he has to do, it will be with you and me on his mind first. That is his oath signed by his own blood. That's the way he died. And to you and me today, if we honestly look at that, I think we will step back and with our eyes and our hearts in wonder, look at the cross and say, what wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love? It is not a warm, fuzzy feeling. It is a choice that runs deep when you make a choice of love. But come the third day, he rose up. How and why? He belonged to the realm of the gods, to the eternal realm, to the realm of infinity. Even a small insult to him would translate to infinite insultation. Insult. Even a small amount of pain would translate to infinite pain. A small amount of humiliation would translate to infinite humiliation. Because he lived in the realm of God. He was God. He never stopped being that. And therefore, when you look at the horrendous sacrifice and suffering that he went through in Gethsemane and the cross, we recognize that it was infinite suffering. And therefore, he, God, shall see the travail of his Jesus' soul and be satisfied. In other words, every mistake, blunder, sin that anybody has committed from the first person on earth to the last person who ever lived was completely paid for by that one eternal sacrifice that Jesus made with the death on the cross. It was completely paid for. Completely covered. Justice had been done because no amount of finite sins are greater than an infinite suffering of death because he suffered death. And like we said, the death was the impending doom of complete separation. So he rose because he himself had done nothing wrong it was our sins, our mistake that he was voluntarily taking upon himself. He himself had done nothing wrong. Justice would still be maintained if he was raised up. And so he was allowed to rise up from the grave. And when he did, he rose up with life that was his original life. His own. But with an eternal difference. Because at the point of the cross, he had actually sacrificed it. He had given it up. And so when it came back to him now, he could not possess it all by himself. Before the cross, he was the only begotten son of God. After the cross, he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Who are these brethren? Siblings. Whosoever believes. And the word whosoever takes in every human being from the beginning to the end. Nobody is left out. Whosoever believes can become a brethren. 
sharing the very life that he had forfeited, which he took back, but this time to share with the others. And so, both he who sanctifies Jesus in God and those who are being sanctified, you and me, are all of one. One what? One blood, one stock, one family. Because that is the life he gifts to us. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. It is a life that is the life of deity that is offered to humans on earth. That is the plan that he made and that he ex executed. Go to my brethren, he said after he rose up from the dead. Go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, because I am your brother. Way back, way back when Abraham asked God, how will you show me these things will happen? 